Welcome to the Pennsylvania Level 2 Lecture on Earth Chemistry. Electrons fly around different distances away from the nucleus. We call these electron levels or orbitals. Electrons, when they gain energy, can move up an energy level, and when they lose energy, they will fall back to their original level. So for example, lithium has two energy levels. There are two electrons in the first level and one electron in the second level. Fluorine has two levels as well. Two electrons in the first level and seven electrons in the second level. If an electron gains energy, so let's say this electron gains energy, it will actually move up to the second level. Once it loses energy, it will fall back to its original state. The periodic table is an ingenious way to organize elements according to the number of protons they have, how many electron levels they have, how many electrons are in the outermost shell, etc. The main thing to know about the periodic table is that they are arranged according to their atomic number, in other words, how many protons are in each atom. So for example, hydrogen has one proton, helium has two, lithium three, so on and so forth, all the way down to 102. Chemical formulas indicate what element is present in a compound and how many. Each element is represented by one capital letter. Sometimes there's a lowercase letter as well, but there's always a one capital letter. The number after the letter will indicate how many are present. So for example, H2O, there are two hydrogen atoms and only one oxygen atom. There's only one oxygen atom because there are no numbers behind the oxygen. A chemical bond brings atoms together and keeps them together. A chemical bond is produced when the electrons in the outermost shell are interacted. This means that they are either being shared or transferred between atoms. For example, sodium, Na, has one electron in its outermost shell. Chlorine, for example, has seven electrons in the outermost shell. Chlorine really wants one more electron, and sodium really wants to give away electron. So sodium will give its electron to chlorine. Because we're sharing electrons, or we're giving up electrons, this is called a chemical bond. Sodium and chlorine will now be bonded together. Ions are electrically charged particle, which means they either have a positive charge or a negative charge. This is caused when there's an uneven balance between protons and electrons. So for example, if we have an atom with 10 protons and 11 electrons, it'll have a negative charge because there's one more electron than proton. An example I gave in the previous slide, sodium has one electron in its atom or shell, so it's unstable. It's going to lose its electron, therefore it'll become a heavy positive charge. Chlorine, since it gained an electron, will have a negative charge. The positive and negatives attract, and that will form a bond. These positive and negative atoms are called ions. An isotope has a different number of neutrons. Therefore, it will have a different atomic mass. It will have the same number of protons, because if we change the protons, it will change the atom. Atomic mass is the amount of protons plus neutrons. Since they both have a mass of 1, you add them together to get the atomic mass. Hydrogen has one proton and zero neutrons. This gives us an atomic mass of one AMU. AMU stands for atomic mass unit. An isotope of hydrogen has one proton and two neutrons. This gives us an atomic mass of three. Therefore this is an isotope because its atomic mass is greater than the average hydrogen atom. A molecule is the smallest physical unit of an element or a compound. This will consist of one or more like atoms in an element or two or more different atoms in a compound. So to simplify it, it's the smallest element or the smallest compound. So hydrogen 
is an example of a molecule. Hydrogen gas is also an example of a molecule. Oxygen and oxygen gas are both molecules. You put them together, that's also a molecule. So this is a molecule of water, this is a molecule of hydrogen gas, this is a molecule of oxygen gas. So they can be a single element or they can be a single compound. If I have, for example, a bunch of water molecules, all of these together are not a molecule. Individually, they are each a molecule. A compound is two or more elements combined through a chemical bond. Typically compounds have different properties than the elements do separately. For example, hydrogen gas is very flammable and it's a gas. Oxygen can also be flammable, but if you put the two together it is completely harmless and non-flammable and a liquid. So the property has changed when they combined. A mixture is a material that contains two or more substances that cannot be chemically combined. In other words, you can separate them. For example, air can be separated. You can have pure oxygen gas in a tank. You can have pure hydrogen in a tank. Salt water can be separated if you allow the water to evaporate. It'll leave the salt behind. A bag of sand and rocks, that could easily be separated. A solution is just a type of mixture. So this is typically in a liquid form, so salt water. So the salt is dissolved in the water, or sugar water, sugar is dissolved in the water. They can both still be separated, but they're in a liquid form. Chemical properties describes how a substance will change or react with other substances. The key word here is react. If there's a reaction going on, that's a chemical property. So for example, if we have iron rusting, that rusting is a reaction with water and oxygen in the air. Another example would be flammable because that's a different type of reaction. A physical property is a property that you can observe without changing the substance into a new substance. In other words, you can't change the chemical formula. So some examples of physical properties would be temperature, volume, density, boiling points, color, texture. So if I take a sheet of paper and I rip it in half, the volume will change, but it's still a sheet of paper. Another example, if I take water and I lower its temperature, it's still water. If I lower the temperature, the density will change, but it's still water. It is still H2O. So the chemical formula does not change. This concludes the Level 2 Pennsylvania Lecture.